Hello and welcome to the Algebras. In this lecture, lecture number 15, we will discuss concrete realizations of all finite irreducible root systems. Recall that in the previous lecture, we have proved the following theorem, that the Dynkin diagram of an irreducible root system is one of the following nine diagrams. So here we have four series of diagrams and five exceptional cases. The diagram AN, which is just a line. The diagram BN, which is a line which ends with a double edge directed in one way. The diagram CN, which is the same as BN, but the direction of the double edge is reversed. The diagram DN, which is a line which ends with a triple point. The diagram G2, which is the only diagram with a triple edge between two vertices. The diagram F4, which is the only diagram where you have a double edge in the middle. And the diagrams E6, E7, and E8, which are three exceptional diagrams with a triple point not at the end of the diagram. To avoid repetitions in these diagrams, for the serial diagrams, we assume that for AN the parameter N is a positive integer. For Bn, the parameter n is a positive integer at least 2. For Cn, the parameter n is a positive integer at least 3. And for Dn, the parameter n is a positive integer at least 4. And the aim of the today's lecture is to give a concrete realization for each of these root systems, in particular showing that they all exist. So this will complete the classification of all irreducible root systems. They are really in bijection with these Dinkin diagrams. So we start with the realization of the series AN. Actually, we have already seen this realization in the previous lectures. We start with a standard Euclidean space R n plus 1 with a standard basis E1, E2, and so on, E n plus 1. In this Euclidean space, we consider the subspace consisting of all vectors, the sum of coordinates of which is equal to 0. Our root system will be a root system in this subspace, not in the original Rn plus 1, but in this subspace which has dimension n. So the root system consists of all differences of different basis vectors. So these differences clearly belong to the subspace E. And we have already seen that this is a root system. As a basis of this root system, we can take the vectors EI minus EI plus 1, where I runs from 1 up to n. Then the positive roots will be differences EI minus EJ, where I is less than J, and negative roots will be differences EI minus EJ, where J is less than I. Now one can explicitly compute the angle bracket between all the vectors in our basis and see that if i is equal to j, then the angle bracket of alpha i and alpha j is equal to 2. This is always the case. Now, if i and j are different by 1, then the angle bracket is equal to minus 1. So we have, for example, ei minus ei plus 1 and ei plus 1 minus ei plus 2. The scalar product between them is minus 1. So the angle bracket will be 2 times minus 1 divided by the scalar product of alpha i with alpha i, which is 2. So we get minus 1. In all other cases, we get 0. So if i and j is far away, then the scalar product of ei minus ei plus 1 and ej and minus ej plus 1 is equal to 0. So this gives us the following Cartan matrix of this root system. And from this Cartan matrix, we see that this root system has type A, N. So we only have one edge between any pair of consecutive vertices. And the while group of this root system is a symmetric group Sn plus 1, which acts on E tilde by permuting the coordinates of the basis vectors. And of course, this action induces the action on E, and this action preserves phi. So the while group of this root system is the symmetric group. Next, let us consider a realization of type Bn. In this case, we take E to be the standard Euclidean space Rn with a standard scalar product and the standard basis. And as the root system phi, we take the set of all vectors in E, which are of the form plus or minus the basis vector, 
or is a difference or sum of different basis vectors. So the, it is clear that the lengths of the vectors in this root system is either one for these vectors or square root of two for these vectors. As a base of this root system, we take the vectors ei minus ei plus one. So this is just like the basis in the previous case for all i from one to n minus one. But additionally, we, we have the basis vector alpha n, which is just the last basis vector en. In this case, the positive roots will be exactly the basis vectors and also all sums or differences of basis vectors where difference is taken for ei minus ej where i is less than j. And all the negative roots will be negations of basis vectors or negations of the sums of minuses of positive roots. It is easy to check that the Cartan matrix of this root system will be, so for the first basis vectors, they are the same as in the previous root systems, that we will have type an submatrix of rank n minus 1 here. And then the only problem is the last basis vector, which is smaller, so it has length 1, all others have length root of 2, so it is smaller than all other basis vectors. Therefore, the angle bracket with this vector will not be symmetric and will be as indicated here. So the coefficient, if you take the angle bracket between alpha n minus 1 and alpha n, it will be bigger than the angle bracket between alpha n and alpha n minus 1, because the length of alpha n is smaller. So consequence, this root system has type Bn, and the while group of this root system will be the group of signed permutations, that is the Ries product of the symmetric group Sn with the cyclic group S2 of order 2. So these are signed permutations, so permutations where you are also allowed to take into account science in the second row, or the permutation matrices with non-zero entries equal to plus or minus one. The type C root system is very similar to the type B root system with one small change. So we consider exactly the same Euclidean vector space with the same scalar product and the standard basis. And the only difference with the type Bn that we take doubles of the basis vectors. So the root system consists of plus minus two times the basis vector, and then the sums and differences of different basis vectors in our Euclidean space. The basis is just like in type B, with only difference that the last vector is two times En and not En. And now we see that the last vector is now longer. It has length 2, while all others have length root of 2. So the positive roots are exactly like in the previous case. The sums or differences of the basis vectors were when the coefficients are ordered or doubled the basis vectors. And the negative roots are the negations of the positive roots. The Cartan matrix is the transposed one to the Cartan matrix of type Bn, and this is only explained by the difference with the type Bn that the last basis vector is now longer than others. In the type Bn it was shorter, so we had minus 2 in position n minus 1n, and now it is longer, so the minus 2 coefficient will be in position n n minus 1. So this is a root system of type Cn, and the while group of this root system is exactly the same as the while group of the root system of type Bn. This is a Ries product of the cyclic group S2 with the symmetric group Sn, so which is the group of all signed permutations on n elements. For the root system of type Dn, we again consider the same Euclidean vector space Rn with a standard scalar product and the standard basis. And as elements of the root system, we take all integer vectors of lengths root of 2. So these are exactly the sums or differences of the different standard basis vectors. As a basis of this root system, we take the vectors ei minus ei plus 1, where i is from 1 to n minus 1 plus, as a last vector, we take the vector en minus 1 plus en. The positive roots are of the form ei plus minus ej, where i is less than j, and the negative roots are minus ei plus minus ej, where i is less than j. The Cartan matrix is again, as in the previous case, if we take the first n minus 1 simple roots, we have the submatrix, which is a Cartan matrix 
for the root system of type AN, because this is exactly the basis of a root system of type AN. And the only difference is the last vector. It is fairly obvious that EN minus 1 plus EN is orthogonal to EN minus 1 minus EN. So it is orthogonal to the penultimate basis vector. So we have zeros here. And then for the basis vector alpha N minus 2, so the scalar product between these two is minus 1. And since all vectors have the same length, we will have minus 1 in the position n minus 2 n and symmetric in the position n n minus 2. And the rest of the entries in the Cartan matrix will be 0. So from this, it follows that this root system phi has type dn. So the only thing is that the last vector is connected not to the penultimate one, but to the vector alpha n minus 2. So this is a root system of type dn. And the while group of this root system will be a subgroup of the group of all signed permutation matrices, which consists of all signed permutation matrices where an even number of signs is involved. So this gives us a root system of type dn. We have already seen how the root system of type G2 looks in the plane. So this is an explicit geometric picture of a root system of type G2 in the Euclidean plane R2. So the set of roots are explicitly given in this picture. And as a basis, we take the roots alpha here and beta here. And the positive roots then are alpha, beta, then beta plus alpha, beta plus 2 alpha, beta plus 3 alpha, and then 2 beta plus 3 alpha. The Cartan matrix of this root system, so our root alpha is shorter and beta is longer, so the Cartan matrix will have twos on the diagonal and minus 1 and minus 3 distributed in this way, so the second root beta is longer, so the coefficient in the position 1, 2 should be smaller. And the while group of this root system is clearly the symmetry group of the regular hexagon, which is the dihedral group D2 times 6. The next root system is a root system of type F4. We take the four-dimensional Euclidean space with standard scalar product and standard basis and consider the following vectors, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and alpha 4. So if we go back to the root system of type F4, we see that it has, if we forget one vertex, what is left is a root subsystem of type B3. So in our explicit realization of type F4, the first three vectors alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 generate a root subsystem of type B3, and so they give us explicitly, if we forget the last coordinate, the standard basis of the root system of type B3, which we constructed a couple of slides before. And the additional simple root alpha 4 is now not an integral root. Its coefficients are half integer, so this is a vector 1 over 2 times the vector minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. If we take these four vectors as the basis of the root system, then to generate the root system, we need to take the corresponding reflections with respect to the basis element and apply them to the basis elements. And then we can compute that the roots of this root system are all vectors alpha in our vector space E, which is equal to R4, which have lengths 1 or square root of 2, and such that the coordinates of the vector 2 alpha are all integers and are either all even or all odd. So the Cartan matrix of this root system can be easily computed using the scalar bracket between the basis elements. It has this form, and hence it follows that this root system has type F4. So the while group of this root system is a very big group of order 1152. It is left to construct the root systems of type E6, E7, and E8. Let's take a look at the corresponding Dinkin diagrams. We see that the Dinkin diagrams of type E6 and E7 are subdiagrams of the diagram of type E8. Therefore, it is enough to construct the root system of type E8 and the root systems of type E6 and E7 will automatically be subsystems. 
And to construct the root system of type E8, we will use the connection of E8 with D7. If we delete this vertex of E8, what is left is a root system of type D7. So we will start with a root system of type D7 and extend it by one more coordinate to a root system of type E8. To construct the root system of type E8, we consider the standard eight-dimensional Euclidean space R8 with a standard scalar product and its standard basis. And we define the basis of our root system by taking a basis of a root system of type D7 and adding to it an extra zero last coordinate and extending these seven vectors by one more vector, which is minus one half of the vector one, 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 one. So now when we defined all basis vectors, we can take the corresponding reflections and apply them to the basis vectors. And the vectors which we obtain in this way should be exactly our root system. So one can compute that the vectors of our root system will be exactly all vectors of our Euclidean vector space, which have the following property, that all coordinates of these vectors are either integers or all coordinates are half integers. Moreover, the sum of all these eight coordinates should be an even integer. So the Cartan matrix of this root system is easily seen to be the following matrix. So if we delete the last column and the last row, we have exactly the Cartan matrix of the root system of type D7, which was constructed a couple of slides before. And then we have this vector. So this vector with all coordinates minus one half will be orthogonal to the basis vector alpha one and so on up to alpha six. And it will have the scalar product minus one with the penultimate basis vector, which is exactly E six plus E seven. So this gives us this Cartan matrix, and this implies that this root system has type E8. The wild group of this root system is huge and has this order, so it's 696 million something. So it's a really huge group. And as already mentioned before, the root systems of type E6 and E7 are obtained from the root system of type E8 by deleting the first basis vector or the first two basis vectors. So these are subsystems of the root system of type E8 corresponding to the inclusions of Dinkin diagram. So the Cartan matrices of these root systems are obtained from the Cartan matrix of the root system of type E8 by deleting the, for E7 we should delete the first column and the first row, and for E6 we delete the first two columns and the first two rows. The outcome will be these matrices. This is for E7, this is for E6. And the while groups of these root systems have the order 51,840 for E6, and 2,903,040 for E7. So this completes realization of all irreducible root systems and now finishes the classification that there is a bijection between irreducible root systems and Dinkin diagrams. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the lecture.